All right, let's take a look at this example, continuing on in our series of videos about factoring. Uh, we were just talking about factoring at the greatest common factor, and that's what we want to look at here. Is there a common factor that these guys have? Well, if I look at 56, 28, and 42, one of the things that, come to, that comes to my mind is that these guys are all in that, that column of the multiplication tables with the sevens. Seven goes into all these guys. So let's go ahead and start there. We can factor out the common factor of seven. Well, what else? You see that all these guys have x's, and as we saw in the last video, the amount of x you can take out, or the amount of any variable, is going to be determined by the smallest amount that you have, which is six. Now what about your y's? These guys all have y, and the smallest amount is y to the third that we see here in this first example, or the first term, excuse me. So this is going to be our GCF, our greatest common factor. You always look for that first. It doesn't matter what you do, the first thing you do when you factor, you got to factor out what? The greatest common factor. So always look for that. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Well, let's see. 56 divided by 7 is 8. Now how much x do you have left? Well, we had 11. We took away 6, and that gives me just 5. How much y do you have left? Well, we had three factors of y. We took away three factors of y. So we have no y's left. All right, well, this guy's done. Now here, I've got a negative 28 divided by a positive 7. So that's a minus 4. Now how much x? We had 9x's here. We took out 6. So 9 minus 6, of course, is 3. We had 5y's. We took away 3, so that's y squared. And we're done for that middle term. Now for the last guy. 42, or negative 42, divided by 7 is negative 6. You had 6 factors of x. You took out 6 factors of x, so you don't have any x's left. For the y's, you had 10. You took out 3, so that leaves us with y to the 7th. Now I know what you're thinking. Yes! Finished! Box this bad boy. Wait a minute, though. These guys have x's, but this one doesn't, so the x's are okay. These last two terms have y's, but the first one doesn't, so there are no more common y's. However, you've got 8, 4, and 6. These guys are all even numbers. What that tells us is that even though this guy is factored, he's not factored completely. Um, so there's a common factor that we were missing. And from all of this, the common factor we were missing was a factor of 2. Now if I factor that 2 out, let's see what happens. 2 factored out of the 8 gives you 4 next to the 5th. Negative 4 with the factor of 2 taken out is now minus 2 x to the third y squared. Negative 6 factored out from the, uh, factoring the 2 out gives you negative 3 y to the seventh. So we already had what we thought was a greatest common factor, which well, we were wrong about that, weren't we? And by we, I mean you, because, hey, I, I made this problem up, so I knew what was going to happen, right? <laughs> like I ever make mistakes. Just don't watch all of my videos, because you'll find mistakes. So, challenge for you, I guess. Well, what am I going to do? This guy's not the greatest common factor. He was missing this factor of 2. How do I put those guys together? Well, remember, we're talking about factoring. We're talking about rewriting using multiplication. This is multiplication here. When I factored out the 2, that was multiplication. So when I missed that common factor of 2 here, that really should be multiplied with this to get my true common factor. So 2 times the 7 is 14. And there's x to the 6th, y to the 3rd. And then what's left inside is what we have right here, all of that stuff. 4x to the 5th minus 2x to the third y squared minus 3y to the seventh. So we took out a 7, we took out a 2, so that really meant we took out a 14? Is, is that real? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, 14 times 4 gives you 56. 14 times 2 gives you the 28. 
and the 14 times 3 gives you the 42. So 14 is one of those guys you're probably not going to see right at the very beginning as being the greatest common factor, but it is there. So now we are finally done with this problem. So this one was a little bit more challenging. Okay. Let's, let's work through a few more examples, some things that you need to see so you can be familiar with them. And one of those is a problem like this. Say negative 2x squared plus 5x um, minus 12. Now, at first glance, there's not anything you can do to this problem, but there is. Uh, now, I'm very anal about the way that I do certain things, and I hope that you develop that same sense of things have to be just right. You'll notice here that this guy leads off with a negative. Now, normally that's not a problem, but what you're going to find out is that in terms of factoring, negatives at the beginning don't really help us out. They kind of get in the way, and it doesn't allow us to do all the fun things that we usually do. So I'm going to take out this negative because it leads off with a negative. I want to say it leads off, talk about lead coefficient. Your polynomial needs to be in descending order, highest exponent down to your constant, or whatever it happens to be. If you lead with a negative, you really want to factor out that negative. It'll make your life a lot easier. So I'm just going to factor out a negative 1. And when you factor this out, you're really just changing the signs of everything. So it becomes a positive 2x squared. This was a positive 5, but if you divide it by negative 1, it gives you negative 5x. And negative 12, when you factor out that negative, becomes a plus 12. Now later on, we would see if there's more that can be done with this guy, but right now we're just looking at taking out the greatest common factor. And so what I was trying to show you here is to just take out a common factor of negative 1 if you lead with a, comp if you lead with a coefficient that's negative. All right, well, let's try something else. For some reason, my students have severe difficulties when handling a problem like this. x to the 25th, y to the 51st, plus x to the 42nd, y to the 38th. I mean, it seems simple enough. You just have two terms. They both have x's and y's, it's going to be about determining what is that greatest common factor. Well, in terms of the coefficients, they're just 1, so the common factor of 1 doesn't really help us out. But notice that they both contain x. And as we've already talked about, the amount of x that you can pull out of everybody is limited by the smallest number, in this case, the 25. Notice they both contain y's, so the amount of y that I can factor out of both is determined by the smaller of these two numbers, in this case the 38. So there's my 38. Now, when it comes to taking out common factors, however many terms you have in the original is how many terms you have inside here. If you look back at the first example we did in this video, you had one, two, three terms we just took out a common factor, yet we still had one, two, three terms on the inside. So here, I'm taking out my common factor, and I'm going to have two terms left inside. Let's see what those two terms are. x to the 25th, I took away x to the 25th, so I don't have any x's here. I had y to the 51st, and I took out 38 of those y's. So 51 minus 38 gives you 13. Now that's going to be just from this term right here. If you multiply those back, you're going to get x to the 25th, and when you combine the y's, you get y to the 51st. Now we have to see about this other term. So this is a plus. See, these are two separate terms. So I had 42 x's, and I'm taking out 25. So that leaves you with how many x's? Let's see, 42 minus 25, do some borrowing there, and you come up with 17. You had y to the 38th. You took out all of those guys, so you're done. So the problem really isn't that bad. You just have to recognize what the greatest common factor is and how you factor that out. Make sure that when you distribute, 
you get one term and your second term, and you're going to find out that that's exactly what you started out with. Now let's do this problem. This is going to segue into the next series of videos. If I gave you this, now let's see what you let's see what you do. Let's see what you're thinking. If I have x y plus five y, I say, all right, let's factor this guy. Can you find a common factor? Well, considering the problems that you've done so far, I hope this isn't too much of a stretch. You see that both of these terms contain a factor of y. So it should only make sense that our common factor here is y. So if I factor out y, what's left over? Well, let's see, from this first group, all you have is x. And from the second group, all you have is a plus 5. And you're probably wondering, all right, Math Man 1024, what gives? How, how's that? Is that it? Are you sure? Because that's like the easiest thing we've done today. Yeah, it's the easiest thing we've done. But if you can understand what you did here, these guys had a common factor. You saw this was x times y. This was 5 times y. So that common factor comes out front. And you're left with the x plus 5. If you get that, <coughs> excuse me, then I think you're going to get the next piece. So we're going to make a little transition here. I want you to look. I want you to compare what happens over here. Okay. Now over here, I'm going to give you this. x times the group x plus 7 plus 5 times the group x plus 7. Now, I maintain that these problems are pretty much the same. I've just changed some of the numbers from one to the other. You may say, why are these the same? Well, you agreed with me that y was a common factor here because you saw the multiplication that was implied. Well, over here, I've got x times that group, 5 times that group. This group, this x plus 7, is my common factor. No one ever said that common factors could only be single terms like what we've been doing so far. Sometimes common factors are larger guys, in this case the group x plus 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this group, and I've got to use parentheses here, I'm going to factor out x plus 7. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking that group, that whole factor, I'm taking it out of this group right here, and I'll be left with x. When I take x plus 7 out of this group right here, what's left over? I'm just left with x plus 5. So just like you took a y out of both of these terms over here, I'm taking out an x plus 7 over here. Over here, I was left with the remaining pieces, x plus 5. Over here, I have x plus 5. So it's the same thing, just a little more complicated. And what this does for me is that leads us into factoring by grouping. So that's what the next video is going to be about. So stay tuned.